In today's show, we're talking about Power Apps charts. So you guys have asked for them for a long time, right? Power Apps has a, a column chart, a line chart, and a pie chart all built in, but they're not the best to work with. So what we're gonna do in this video is talk to you about how to work with it, which is really about shaping your data, and then just show you some of the little nooks and crannies so you guys can hopefully build some better reporting solutions. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911, those guys. And today we're gonna to dive into Power Apps charts. And so we're gonna look at the column chart, the line chart, and the pie chart, right? All three of your options, and help you understand better how to use them. You know, and the charts themselves aren't that difficult to use. The challenge becomes though, is that it's all about getting your data right. So we're gonna spend a little more time on shaping the data than you probably wanted, but that's what's really the key to using these charts because the charts don't have a lot of settings or a lot of controls or flexibility. So you have to kind of use them the way they're meant to be used. But if you get pretty good at manipulating your data, then it's not a problem. So that's what we're going to look at here. And with that, you know, I just remind you if you're kind of into this and you need a more specific, man, I really want to do some charting, some reporting, but it needs to look a little nicer, right? The person I'm building this report for really likes it when the spacing is like this, then if that type of customizations, you're going to need to go over to Power BI. So, I've got a few different videos as well. Maybe I'll link to them down below to talk about integrating Power BI into your Power App, but we're not going to talk about any of that today. Today is all about Power Apps charts. So with that, let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. I thought I'd start by just showing you a few of the different things we're going to build, kind of give you an idea of what we're, we're after, and just kind of set the groundwork here. You know me, though. We'll probably diverge a little bit from this, but this is roughly what I built as I was practicing for this. And so this one is a column chart. As you would expect, you can have one or more columns for a uh, particular data source. So in this case, we're gonna use my employees list. And so we're just gonna pull in some different columns just to kind of show how that works. Uh, you'll notice, you know, we have the ability to select different ones. So we'll talk about when you select them, how we get the data out. I think that's something that doesn't get covered enough. So how do you kind of integrate that? And then we'll also talk a little bit about these uh, labels down here and you know how you, uh, can control the legend a little bit because you know it it defaults to something but it's all customizable we also talk about the colors so nothing too exciting but at least get you an idea here on the pie chart side um same type of thing one of the things i thought might be fun with the pie chart though is kind of take that idea that you know we want to show details better so like if we click on chewy not only do we get to see you know chewy's his slice of the pie but we're going to load his record up over here in a form and so you could edit, save, modify, or just view the complete details. So kind of make sure you understand how to bridge these chart controls back into your data set because sometimes you want to change your data. So we'll look at that a little bit. The pie chart one, it has the least amount of customization. So pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. And then we also have the line charts. Um, you know, as you probably expect here, the line chart, you know, you can kind of go in. We've got two different series going. Um, so we'll look at this, but there's not... There's nothing really tangibly different from this one versus I think the column chart. I feel like they're both very similar. So we won't have to spend too much time here. And then the last one here, which I realized I did not have a button to navigate to, is we're also going to make uh, this one. And so this one came from someone on Twitter who I cannot think of their name at the moment. I apologize to you, but whoever you were. Um, this, uh, and this idea here is we're going to dynamically sum some of the data. So I'm, we're going to group my employees list, that same data set we were just looking at, but we're going to dynamically group it by the department they're in. And then for each department, we're going to, you know, figure out the slice of the pie for the uh, salaries for that department. And even like if we click on IT, you can see that IT's total salaries are $355,000. Whoa! I hope one day I have a company where my IT department needs $355,000 of salaries because I think that'd be a pretty good sized company. But today, you know, my fake data, that is what it is. But I just thought this was kind of fun because this was a, you know, just more of that shaping data. We have a bunch of flat records like we usually do. And so how are we gonna kind of come in here and, and massage this to be what it wants to be? So, so that's what we're gonna build. So let's switch back over here and let's just pop open a new screen and let's build one of these. And so the first one I want to talk about here, and we'll go over here to the insert. And so you can go to charts. And so there's where you're going to see your different options. So column chart, line chart, or pie chart. And remember the Power BI tile. So this is the idea we can embed a Power BI uh, report that we'd built in here, but our tile, I guess, from that report. But don't, uh, we're not going to mess with that today, but I have other content out there for that one. So it's still a column chart on here. And one of the other things we're going to do as we go through this, I want to make sure we kind of talk a little bit about how I figured this stuff out, right? 
Because I think that's another important skill that hopefully you guys are picking up along the way is not only how to, you know, go recreate something I teach you, but how to start to poke and prod and make up your own stuff. So when you add a uh, column chart here, you can see that it actually uh, comes in as a few different pieces. Oh, you want you guys to see something else kind of cool? Whew. Look at that. You can finally collapse this to the right. What? I know. <laughs> Which is weird because in today's video, we're actually going to use the right side. All my other videos, I never use it. Very excited for that. Anyway, so over here on the column chart, we pull it in. It pulls in a group of three. Uh, so the legend goes down here at the bottom. And to me, this feels a lot like it's really just a uh, gallery. It's not as customizable. We don't have all the controls. Uh, but it really just feels like a horizontal gallery because you're just going to feed it uh, items and then that's how it knows what to show across the bottom. Uh, we have the main star of the show, the column chart. And then we also just get a title up here, which is just a, a label, right? So I can be like employee chart demo. It's just literally a normal label. So you can do all your fancy bold, underlined, sizings, you know, whatever. It's just text. It's just a text label. Okay. So the column chart, so when you go to look at this, the key to understand is that it's just going to take items, right? Which that tells me right away, it's a table of data. And so they give me a sample table. So I just expanded this. I'm like, all right, well, what's in that table? And if I look at that without even paying any attention, I'm like, all right, I take that as it's going to be a number column, some text columns, numbers, numbers, numbers. And so really that is what it is. So if you go over here and if you go into the advanced properties of the chart, you're going to see that this is where the uh, items come from. And then here are the labels. So I'm like, oh, instead of series one being area, I want that to be density. Boom, it just changes. And, you know, if I change the city, well, city's just words, so that can't be done that way. So that doesn't work. Population probably does. And so that's what happens. And it, I thought, found it really confusing because they just kind of guessed. And I didn't realize this was over here. So I just thought they took the columns in the order I sent them. But I finally found this. And I was like, oh, that makes a lot more sense. The same goes for the colors. So the colors that it uses is just a table of colors, right? And you can kind of see this RGBA, blah, 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 blah. That is clearly some type of green. But I can be like, oh, I want that to be uh, green, yellow. And look at that, now it's green, yellow. So this chart is really just using this color palette uh, to do what it needs to do. Now also, I believe if you come in here, if we delete all the, of these and we just put in blue, so then now, because there's only two colors, it's just gonna alternate. So that's how you control the color of what is being presented out here. You can just, you know, put in two here. It re, it just uh, iterates between the two. Also, remember, this is just a single column table, right? I know that because I can tell by the two single brackets. So you could feed it a table from another data source if you wanted. It doesn't care. It just needs to show, um, it just needs a single column that has got, um, you know, the, the colors in it. So there you go. So that's how we do the colors. Um, other fun things here before we start adding my data. So the item gap, you know, if you want to have a little, little space between everything, which I think is pretty, uh, pretty handy to do. I should probably also change that neon green, right? As much as I love green, yellow, I do not think it shows up very well here. I'm going to go red. There we go. Probably easier for you guys to see. Okay. So then number of series. So this is controlling because right now, you know, we're just showing population. If you change this to two, now we're seeing population and density. And the way that it knows to do density, right, is over here, like, hey, population is series one, density is series two. So this is what it's using based on how many of the series you tell it to pull over. So you can set the axis minimums and axis maximums. So if you want to kind of control the range of the data. Um, the other thing that I was a fan of, so grid style right now is X only. I've been doing all. I like to have, you know, kind of that full, there you go, I'll zoom in for you a second, but that full flushed out, right? I can, I can visualize better. I don't know. I'm not very good at graphing data. So for me, I need as many indicators as possible. You'll also notice here, like if we come in and, you know, we, we can select these, but nothing really happens. We'll talk about that in just a second. Ah, now let's just make that right now. So what can happen here, so like you saw, I selected one of those. Well, immediately what I said was, hey, let's throw a label on the screen. And we can see that that is currently named column chart two. So let's see what the output is. Column chart two dot, oh, look at that, selected. And then dot, how about city? And so then now if we click on uh, Cairo, one of the Cairo fields, now notice whether I click on the red or the blue, it doesn't matter because both of these, um, 
data points are tied to the city of Cairo. So that's why we're seeing it. You know, if I go over here to Shanghai, same type of thing. So that was important for me though. You know, and this is one of the ways that I learn, right? Is I just went in and I, I literally just typed in column chart two and I just started scrolling through. I was like, oh look, there's my friend selected. I know what selected does. That gives me the whole record. And when it gives me a whole record back, yay. Once I've got my whole record, right? Then I can really drive in here and be like, oh yeah, I wanna see the population. And so then it's gonna let me kind of do that. So, so that was kind of another big key for me. Um, other than that, I'm trying to think, you know, you also have the whole um, angles down here. I think that's important. So like if you notice New York City's kind of doesn't show because it's been angled out. So I'd be like, hey, X label, your angle needs to be 30. So that way it's kind of flatter, which gives it more room. And still though, New York City is getting, you know, dot, dot, dotted because it ran out of space, which is funny, right? It needed one more character, the Y, but it put three dots and <laughs> show me the Y. And this is where it's easy to get frustrated, right? You don't control this. You know, I, I would like to be able to click on New York City and just make it wider so that way it shows up. It doesn't do. Uh, so that can be a little annoying. Um, the only other one I think that was hiding over here, so markers, that's whether or not you see the values at the tops, right? So that 172 goes away, comes back, yay. So that's what the markers are. And then we also have... Um, hiding in here is a marker suffix. So if you wanted to slap the letter A on all these for some reason, I don't know why, but there you go. And so then now you've got different suffixes. They're all now 172 A's. I, not something I've ever had to do, but I uh, wanted to make sure you guys knew that because that was kind of hidden over there on the left. Uh, minimum bar width, so you can kind of control the sizing. Let's try setting that to 50 and just see what does it do. Yeah, so see then all of a sudden now it's too big. No, let's just make it 100 so it's really ob obvious. And so then now we've got to scroll to see our whole chart. So, okay, let's fix that back to 10. Um, so now what I want to do though, so now that you've kind of got, you know, the basics, because that was kind of where I started was, all right, let me click around in here and figure out how these works. Now let's pull in some data and start to feel with, mess with it. So I'm going to switch up here to my items property because I'm going to do lots of fun stuff. Items is spelled with an I, which is up here. And then we're gonna do employees, right? Cause that's the name of our good old favorite SharePoint list. And so my SharePoint list has got some different number columns. And so in this case, you can see that it kind of just figured it out. It's like, hey, I'm gonna pull in age and hourly wage and set all the rest of these to ID. Woo, oh. And then for the uh, label, it did compli compliance asset ID. It must be the first text label. And so right now we're just gonna do first name. So there you go, we are now charting my SharePoint data where in red is the age and blue is the person's hourly wage. That's fun and all, but what if that's not exactly, or that, that's the data that's coming back from my SharePoint list, but what if we wanted to do something a little more? Like let's say, first off, let's show people's full names. Well, so in here you notice like, like all right, well how about for the, um, let's see what they call that, they call it the label. So is there a label? There's not a label over here, right? There's not a come write a formula to get it. There's a label angle, but there's not an actual label field. So how am I gonna do this? So this is where we're gonna get back to our data shaping functions. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here to my list and be like, hey, what I really wanna do is I wanna take the employees list and I wanna add a column to it. So I'm gonna say add a column to employees and I'm gonna call the column full name. And the expression is going to be, and I'm going to just make my life easier. I'm going to use a new feature called this record. So I'm going to say, take this record's first name, ambersand, which means concatenate a space, and then concatenate this record dot last name. And then just like that, we now have a column called a uh, full name. So if we go back over here into our labels, we can now change it to say, hey, I want to use that full name column. And so then now we see everyone's full names, well, unless they get ellipsed, but you get the idea, is that I needed more advanced stuff, I couldn't go change it inside the control, so what I did was I manipulated the data coming in, and I couldn't go change my SharePoint list, that would break like a thousand apps, so I'm just dynamically adding a column. Remember, this add columns function does not affect the SharePoint list in any way, it just affects this instance of it and gives it this column called full name. 
So that was kind of my first piece of this. Like, all right, cool, I can now do that. Um, the other one here is, you know, I also remember this, you know, this just needs to be a table. So one of the things that annoys me about my data set here, as you can see that red is an age, and for some reason, Daniel doesn't have an age, right? He's too pretty, I think, to have an age. So what we wanna do is I don't wanna show anyone who doesn't have an age. That seems like a fair thing to do in a chart that is showing age data. So what I can do, you know, just go up here and write in a, a filter, right? So filter employees. And how do I wanna fill it? Notice I kinda of close it out so I don't get confused. And what do I wanna do? I wanna filter where age is greater than zero. And so then now it should recompile itself. Now, sometimes this happens, I found. And so when it does this, oh, <laughs> do not do that. I'm gonna highlight all this, I'm gonna take it out. It's gonna like go, what? And then I'm gonna just put it right back and then it redoes. But notice now in my data set, Daniel has been dropped because his age was not greater than zero because he didn't have one. So I wanna make sure you guys kind of thought about that as well, is that there's nothing, right? All that this thing cares about at the end is you give it a table. It doesn't care how you get there. So you're gonna filter, you can add columns, you can rename columns, you can show columns, you can hide columns, drop columns, whatever you call it. You have complete control, but it's about doing your data. And as we go through these examples, you're gonna see that we're gonna do a little bit more advanced with that. But this first one, just throwing full name in there, it kind of felt nice, right? I can see selected dot population is no longer a thing. So let's do selected dot, uh, do their department. And so then now let's just make sure that still works. There you go, Chewy is apparently an IT. Cool. So we have got the basics, right? We are not the basics, that's, that's pretty good stuff. I feel like we've got a good understanding of kind of how this works uh, for the chart. We know that's a label. So then down here, what you're gonna need to understand is that your items property it's just, it just shows whatever table you give it. Now, it is just automatically using the series label. So column chart two, right? It's the name of our chart control. It just pulls the series label. That's how it just worked automatically. But literally earlier, you probably saw in the demo, I had the color names and I just, I just did this. I literally just typed in red and blue. It doesn't care. It doesn't know. Red, blue, let's just give it a third one. Red, blue, yellow, right? It doesn't know what it's doing. It just knows that it's um, it needs to show the table of data you pass it, and it needs to uh, and it just follows the color pattern that came out of the chart. That's all it knows, um, right? Item color set. See, column chart two item color set. So I can even change its color set and be like, hey, I want all these to be um, orange. So we'll just do orange like that, and so now they're all three orange. So terrible, not something you would do, get it, but this is what I need you guys to do, right? I need to plant the seeds, and the seed is is that items is just a table, and item color set is just a table. The default values are awesome because they just worked, we didn't have to think about them, so if they work for you, I forget what item color set, oh, it even knows, it's like, hey, give me that, and then we'll change this back here. It knows what it needs to be. Um, sorry, I got confused typing. Uh, column chart two and then dot uh, series labels. And so it, the defaults are probably what you want, but you can manipulate them if you don't like them. And so you could use them, you could you know add your own column to this data set, you could do some looking up. You, you could manipulate this to be whatever you wanted it to be, but just keep in mind it needs to be a table. Okay, I feel like I harped on that enough. So. So that's the, uh, the column chart. So let's go over here and let's do another idea. So let's do another new screen and let's throw in the line chart. And so the line chart is uh, almost identical. I mean, really the same thing, right? We got a nice little label up at the top. This legend, same exact concept. It's just a table, it just does its thing. We won't mess with that. Um, Honestly, the only thing that I found that was really tangibly different, uh, right, because you still have the whole, you control the grid style, control the items. We can go back to employees again. There you go. Um, and so then you have the number of series controlled. You still control the angles. You can control the Y angle this time as well. You couldn't control it uh, on the other one, I don't think. And then um, it's the same picker. It's the same color. So everything about this one is the same. 
The only minor exception to that is if you throw a label on here, and if we say line chart two dot, it is only selected items, which is unfortunately just the entire, oh, it's mad at me, hang on. So we just can cat line on chart two, uh, first name. There you go. So there's nothing selected. If I select it, so if we're gonna select right, like very specifically this one, it grabs everyone's name. Uh, so it doesn't actually know what records you have or have not selected. It just basically you either get all the values or none of the values. So I don't think there's any scenario where line chart two dot selected items would ever be used because in reality that is no different than just using whatever you had in items. There, it's the same same data set. Um, so um, also there is an on select for these. So if you wanted to have something happen when they clicked on your chart, um, other than just selecting the record, you know, you could fire off and have it, you know, show a pop up or navigate to another screen, open Power BI, mm, might be a mad idea. Uh, but yeah, you have complete control of that. But yeah, so the line chart, you know, it doesn't do anything too exciting. You can come over here and be like, hey, I want it. And notice like, you know, it's real easy to accidentally click on the whole thing. You don't see your settings. So then you just click again, you get in here and be like, oh yeah, number of series is three. And then you go over here, you know, and it's showing age, hourly wage, and ID. So those are just three columns, yay. But no matter which one of these you change or you click on, you know, you're getting the same data up at the top, so. Um, and you notice, oh, it's showing you like weird data there, so we would just change that. Let's make it last name. And so there you go. Okay, so line chart, column chart, pretty spot on um, on what's going on between the two. So nothing, I won't belabor the point. All right, last but not least, let's throw in our friend the pie chart. Hello, pie chart, yay. Pie chart mostly works exactly the same also. Um, the only difference maybe with pie chart is that you can't do more than one. So, you know, you can see here, it's kind of pulled my, oh, let's not use that data. Let's use our employees. Click in here, switch back to employees. And so then, and once we've got employees, um, what we want to do here is we want to, um, you can see you only get to choose one series. So we can be like, hey, do this off of hourly wage for the moment. But we're gonna, we're gonna make this one a lot more complicated in a second. Where did hourly wage go? There it is, <laughs> losing my mind. But there you go, you see everyone's hourly wage. We're like, that's kind of annoying because I wanted to see their thing, that's fair. So then maybe you change the label here. That should probably be first name. This one should probably have been hourly wage. There it was, way at the top. There you go. So that is kind of everyone's hourly wage shown in a pie, uh, pie chart. You can do um, some stuff around where the positions go. The border thickness, the border color. So I was playing with this earlier, like reminded me of playing a Trivial Pursuit because now I had all these little wedges. Um, I think clear is probably the best one that way. Pull it in there. You can um, also set a uh, explode. And so this one is weird. I mean, it makes sense, but it kind of, ex it literally explodes out, right? Um, so, you know, I was like, oh, well, maybe this would look cool. No, that looks really weird. So. I don't know, I, I wasn't smart enough to use explode and not make it seem weird. But you can kind of see now when I hover, woo, woo, <laughs> I'm easily amused. Okay, anyway, that's not what you're here to see. So the thing that I wanna talk about now, um, so I think there's two more things we need to cover. So one is earlier I showed you how to like get into the details of a person, or I, I demoed it, so let's make sure you understand that. So if you click on a form, throw an edit form over here, and we're just kind of slide it over here, whoop, and something like that. And so then I'm gonna say, hey, form, use employees, and it's gonna render, cool, there it is. And so then we're gonna just change it to one column so it looks a little nicer. And then the only thing you need to do is you go up here to item, and so for the item, you're just going to say use pie chart two dot selected. Because, oh, it's pie chart three, that's why, pie chart three dot selected. And so then what it should happen is it, um, should pull in that record. So let's try. So let's go here. And so if we click on Jeff's record, oh, we do not get anything to display. Why is that? 
Hmm. All right. So if it's not going to cooperate that way, it's very rude, I would have to say. So what it, for whatever reason, the form does not believe that they're both using the same data source, which I wonder if, did I do something weird with my items? I don't think I did. Let's check. No. Okay. Well, in this case, what am I going to do is I'm going to click on the form eventually. So instead of the item being selected, right, we have the ID. So we're just going to look up. So we're going to say look up to employees, if I can type employees, and we're going to say where ID equals this selected ID. So then now, if we select Jeff, there he is. If we select Chewy, cool. So then now this is how you can connect your form data or, you know, right, and it's not about form data. You know me, I don't build a lot of form solutions, but the idea is that I was able to bridge the gap between the two and get it into another control so I could, could go manipulate the data. So whether it's a patch or whether it's running a flow, I don't care what you're really doing. It's just about, um, you know, connecting the bridge here. And actually, this is important that I did it this way because this is going to, uh, you know, it, it, most of the time you're going to manipulate your data. And so when you manipulate your data, then you're going to want to have to kind of think about that. And so getting it out via lookups easier. Okay. So let's do the more advanced solution now. Let's go talk about um, how to do that kind of summary view. So let's do another one. So we're going to do a new screen again. And so for this one, we're going to do another pie chart. And for our items, oh, just give me my pie chart. We're going to do employees again. But so this time, though, what I want to do is I want, oh, that is not employees. What I want to do here is I want to uh, do some calculations. And now, so you could do, um, let's do simple first. And so the simple one might be is, you know, right now we show hourly wage, but I want to show that instead of hourly, I want to show that like on a year, year, yearly or salary basis. And so, you know, roughly hourly wage times 2000 is the way that we think of salary, the salary number. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a column. So I'm going to say, hey, I want to add a column to employees. And what column am I going to add? I'm going to add one we're going to call this salary. And so then how do we get the salary? Well, we're going to take this record just because I'm really a big fan of using this to avoid any confusion. So hourly wage times 2000. And so then now my data set, we have new data, right? It should be called salary. So if we scroll over here to the right, there's a salary. And so then now in my little chart or my, my little pie chart here, we can make, hey, I want the label to be the employee name. And we'll just do first name. And then instead of age, we're going to do, we now have the ability to use salary. And so now we're getting the pie chart. Now, unfortunately with the pie chart, there's no easy way to show that salary column. Um, but what you could do, I guess, is you could throw a label over here and you could do something like this. You could say gallery, or no, this is pie chart. This is probably pie chart four, huh? Pie chart four dot selected dot salary. And so then now if I click on a person like Chewy, we see that Chewy makes $200,000 a year. Yikes. Let's make that easier to read though. So I throw the text function around that. We do dollar sign number comma number 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 dot zero zero boop boop. And so then now, yeah, you can see that by clicking on Chewy makes 200,000 and whereas Jeff makes $69,980. So this is um, important though, because this showed you how to, you know, add a computed column. And in this case, you know, it's kind of annoying because you got to click on it to see it. But what I might do is go back over here to my line chart. And so what if we just did that same thing here? Well, let's just go copy that formula, Shane. Let's be lazy. So control A, control C, back over here, click in here. And so let's just add that here because this will be a lot easier to visualize. And then we'll be like, hey, I just want to see on this first one, I want to see their salary right there at the top. And then we'll just change this to number of series to be one. And so then now we've got our, uh, our data kind of on a much easier way to kind of represent people's salaries. So, but this is where also you might find yourself annoyed because you're like, hey, I want to change this to have a currency symbol. Mm. Can't do it. Um, so you'd have to kind of, you know, fake it, but there's no way to manipulate what shows over here. You can change the range. So I could say start at 50,000 and end at 200,000. You know, we can do that by clicking in here and saying, um, oh, 
uh, max value right here and change this to be 200,000. So we can change it that way and we'll start it at 50,000. <laughs> and people fall off, yikes. But so you can zoom in like that. It looks like one of those uh, news websites, the way that they you know, misrepresent numbers. That, that's, that's how it works right there. Um, but anyway, so that is important, is understanding how to add a column, okay? So that was the first part of summing. Part two of summing, let's get in there and get a little fancier. So instead of what I'm gonna, instead of this, let's go back to employees first, so let's dumb this down. Okay, we're back to normal employees. Yay, we're gonna just delete this label for the moment. So now what I wanna do is instead, I wanna group my data by department, okay? And so there is a function called group by, because you know everyone's in a department. So we're gonna say, hey, I want to group by employee, or I wanna group the employee's data by department, there it is. And so when you use the group by function, then you have to say, where do you want the rest of the data to go? Like, so you have to like have a holder, which is a sub table that holds all the records that are grouped into that group. And so what we're gonna do is, just, I always call it something like data like this. So it's real obvious to me that that's my dump. And so then now that we've grouped this, um, you know, there isn't anything to show though. It's like, it doesn't, uh, you know, because the only column that pulled through is department and department's not a number column because when you group data, only the columns that are before your catch all here at the end show up. So what I need to do is I need to add a column to this, right? So this is where we're gonna use your friend add columns, right? We group the data. And so to add the column, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say we're gonna add one, we're gonna call it uh, department total, like that. And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna say, hey, I want you to use the sum function against data. Remember, data is a table. What column do I want you to sum? I want you to sum the hourly wage like that. And then I want you to multiply that by 2000. Remember, because that's how we got to our, um, our salary number. So that should close that out. And so then now that that is done, now you can see that all the data is set up. And if you kind of hover here, you can see, so data has all the remainder data, department, executive finance, blah, 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 and then each department's total is over here. And if you're like, well, I don't understand what's happening, I get that, um, let's do this. An easier way for you to understand this if you're having a hard time with it, is just grab a button and say clear, collect, uh, Cole, show me, put the code in there, press the button, and then now you can go up here and view collections, Cole show me, and you can see that look, executive, and it has the data, and this represents a table. So if you click on the data, you can see that everyone who had a department of um, executive, which is, looks like Nicola, me, Jennifer, and Sarah, all four of us, we got grouped into the data table for this particular record, and so then what it's doing is it is taking our um, hourly wage column, which is EFG, I'm really bad, there you go, hourly wage, so it's adding these up, so 40, 38, 75, 99, right, it's adding these four numbers up, and then what is it doing with those four numbers? It is multiplying them by 2,000, and so that's where it's getting this giant number. So that's, that's how group me works. I probably, or group by, not group me. I probably need to do a video on group by that just explains it in over detail for a really long time, but that's the drive-by version of how group by works. So let's get rid of that. Um, oh, here, one more thing to show you real quick. So then over here, like if you clicked on finance, you know, there was only one person. So Greg was the only one that went into finance. IT had uh, Daniel, May, and Chewy. And so that's where it, it's how it's computing the numbers, okay? So I'm gonna, I'll leave this down here, but I, you know, let's put it over here. So there you go. So that now that we've kind of done that though, we've got this data in here. So then what you could do, because this is what I showed earlier in the last demo, and this is the last thing to show you guys, is what we might just do here is be like, all right, so then I want you to be um, pie chart four. Yes, pie chart four dot selected. I'm going to copy that, so I'm going to have to type that again. And selected dot department, and then we just do an ampersand, and then like this, and be like total salary, and then like this, and then this, and then department total, 
And so then now if I've done a good job, if we click on executive, we see the 507, 540. And of course I do not approve of that not looking like a currency because I never do. So I do not know how many times in my life I have typed this formula, but it's a lot. There we go. So then that looks nice. And so then boom, boom. So, you know, we've got in there. The other thing to remember is you probably, um, let's see. So let's just add a bonus one real quick. Why? Because we're way over on time. So why wouldn't I add bonus stuff? Duh. Um, so what I might do here is just throw employees. And so then here I can be like, hey, and I, then I want to filter. Oh, type in filter, Shane. Filter employees where department equals, oh, not data. You get to see the different pieces. So if we hit play, so if we click on executive, we see the executives, we hit janitorial, we see the janitorials. You get the, the different data, you're summing it. So you've built a pretty complex reporting dashboard with just a couple of clicks of the mouse, but it was really about figuring out how to shape your data. Okay, so there you go. I will stop talking about these crazy controls. Hopefully you guys find this interesting and helpful because you guys have asked for this video for a long time. Um, as always, you know, remember if you're a subscriber to training.powerapps911.com, you can download this uh, app and all the other apps that I've shown. Um, you also get notified about these things. You know, it's a, it's a good little setup. So go check that out. Um, also, we can help you build these if you need help. So hit us up. And finally, leave me comments below. Did you like this? Do you hate this? Do you have ideas to improve this? If you have great comments, you know, I love to pin those up at the top. If people have ideas like, oh, you didn't think of this. I'm like, whoa. So be sure to share. All right. And with that, I think I'm just going to say thanks and have a great day. Hey, it's me again. If you got a second, click the subscribe button. That always keeps me making more videos. Or if you want to work together, need some help getting your Power Apps going, hit me up at Power Apps 911. Always happy to work together. Or finally, if you're really just looking for more videos, that's probably what it is. Check out the Power Apps playlist over here and, you know, enjoy that. All right. Thanks and have a great day.